There we go. Now we don't have Luke dying in the shot. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. It is Joe here. We have James. And um, what did you uh, bring for us today? So I've got Len Wits. And uh, you did pretty good with this the weekend, right? Yeah, I've done two regionals with it now in two weeks, and it's pretty consistent most of the time. Um, and it beats a lot of the top decks. Uh, the only decks I'm not really, I haven't been winning against are the ones that I'm not really sure how to play against. That's not yeah. the deck's fault, that's my fault. Um, but yeah, it's very consistent. Nobody really knows how to play against it because it's been out of circulation for a while. Um, and it just destroys like Thunder Dragons and Autogeists and um, Sky Strikers. Like, they has a really good matchup against those. Yeah. And and so uh, let's go back to the regional quick. So you took it to Brotherhood. I mean, you took it to Carlos week before. We'll talk about that's, that's whatever. So you took it to Brotherhood and you were doing pretty well till the last couple of rounds, right? Yeah, I was I was 4-1. And then I had the decision called against me that, yeah, it doesn't really matter why, but um, it sort of messed with my mind a little bit for the next couple of rounds. Uh, Just through you a little bit. But yeah, I was going 4-1. I was really confident. Um, and... Yeah, I probably could have won some more games. So you're going to stick with this now and uh, grind it out, get good with it? And... Yeah, I've got a couple of changes to make to it in mind, but for now it was pretty solid. Cool, well with that in mind, let's get stuck into the list then, let's see what you got. So, first off, three Lilith, search any trap in your deck. Yep. Um, and three Arima. Arima searches you your uh, Lair of Darkness, or it can um, draw a card, or it can search Diablos. So yep. Diablos, one Diablos. This guy's untargetable, um, puts a card back in your opponent's hand. Really good card. Um, there's not really much more to say about that. He basically wins a Sky Striker matchup on his own. Free body on board every turn, basically. Yeah, he just brings himself back every time a Dark Monster's tributed. Mm -hmm. And everything in my deck with Lair on the field is a Dark Monster. Sure. So, that's the uh, non-infernoid uh, non part. So next I've got my infernoids. So uh, infernoid Decatron, you summon him, you send any infernoid from your deck to the grave. It gains its level, it gains its name, and it gains its effect. So normally you'll um, summon two of these at a time, send um, a monster negate and a spell negate. So uh, you can send DD Crows, lots of other things for him. It's the fact that it's a tuner ever come up out of curiosity. It has done a couple of times. If this gets ashed and I'm left with a level one on the field, um, it's quite easy to summon like a level seven Sightsmas. Yeah. And then I can go into a Synchro eight. Mm -hmm. um, so I've gone into like Beals or Scarlight. Yeah. Things like that. Um, next, I've got two Harmonic. This is a DD Crow on your opponent's turn and it pops a monster, I believe this one is. Yeah, this one pops a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Knows these cards well, guys. Uh, Petrudia and Harmony, they don't come up too much. Um, Petrudia, he's the opposite, so this one pops spells and traps. Um, really good to have in the deck. They're really good fodder, and you can summon them from hand by banishing an Infernoid from your hand or grave. Um, normally, you just put them in the grave, forget about them, banish them later on. Sure. Uh, for the big boys, I've got one Sajek. This guy is played purely for Void Feast. Um, his attack is kind of like his attack effect is kind of okay, but he's a DD Crow. When you attack with him, your opponent banishes any monster they like from their extra deck. Sure. Um, Sightsmas, I play two Sightsmas. This guy, when he attacks, he banishes any card on the field at the end of the battle phase. Um, so this is really good when there's a field spell or something that's annoying you. He only gets his effect if he's attacking a monster though, which is something that's a bit of an annoyance, but. Um, then one Atondale, this guy's just a big body really, he can attack twice per turn if he attacks a monster, he's 2800 attack. Um, all of these monsters, if you want to summon them, you banish two Infernos from hand or deck, uh, mm -hmm. hand or field, no, hand or grave, sorry. Um, so they're quite easy to get out, um, and because they're inherent summons, they can't really be stopped. Sure. Um, now for the really big boys, I've got two Deviati and two Anonku. So Deviati, when he summons to the field, he gets a heavy storm effect and he'll destroy all spells and traps on the field that aren't um, void spells. Yep. 
Um, and his other effect is when a monster effect is used, you can negate and banish that monster. Right. Um, Anonku is the opposite. He gets a dark hole effect when he's summoned. Uh, everything but himself. Mm -hmm. um, and he negates spells and traps. Sweet. Um, so normally you just send these off of Dectron. Um, and you get the spell or trap negate or the monster negate. Mm -hmm. Whichever one you feel is better at the time. Um, On to the spells. I play three Void Imagination. This card is a blowout card when second. My deck focuses on going first, so I mainly use it for fodder for Void Feast. Yep. Uh, but if the games last a while, uh, Void Imagination is disgusting as mm. you summon Tierra from your extra deck by sending Infernoids from your deck. Mm -hmm. um, six Infernoids uh, gives you a huge body on board. You get mills, you get stuff from your extra deck being dumped into the grave. Um, great card. Um, but only good if your opponent has monsters in their extra, from their extra deck on the field. Void Vanishment, you want to see this card every single time. It's the best card in the deck by far. Um, so you summon this, uh, you play this, then you send a card from your hand to the grave, yep. and you can add any void spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Right. So going second, you can add your Void Imagination. Going first, you add your Void Feast. And then you let... Um, yeah. Basically, and this is um, the requirements for Void Feast as well, if you summon it that way. Mm -hmm. um, then I play three Layer of Darkness. Yep. The most important card in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters, and it turns everything on the field to dark. So um, Such a pain in the ass to deal with as well. It is. Like, this... This is the reason it's doing so well for me. Yeah. Because um, your opponent has a big monster. Just tribute it off. Um, no worries at all. Uh, one reasoning. Yeah. This card, nobody ever knows what level to call because nobody really knows what's in this deck. If you meet, you call level two. I don't think you've got a single level two <laughs> there in that. There is not a level two in this deck. It is one, three, four, or eight. Um, Pro tip, guys. One, three, yeah. four, or eight. <laughs> yeah, call one of them. Um, I don't really care which one because it's never that one. Uh, moving on to traps, three EVs. This is busted. This card is is degenerate when it goes off. Like unless you're playing against lots of monster decks, which I seem to be um, towards the end. They like, are increasing in number. To be fair, people are starting to drop that back right now. Yeah, bit. Danger Thunder Dragon. It's no good. Um, Pendulum Magicians. It's no good. There's quite a few different. I mean, Orcusts even. It's not very good against Orcusts because they don't really put spells and traps in. But you play against an Orc guy. You play against a Sky Striker. You get this off. Um, you let yeah, you win. You win. Sure. Um, three Void Feasts. This card, you send a Void spell or trap from your hand or face up on your field mm -hmm. to the grave to be able to summon up to three Inferno to total level eight. So if you get one of these off, um, you get two Decatrons and a Sajet. So that gives you do a Monster Negate, a Spell Negate, and a DD Crow. If you can get two of these off, because you can you can play one of these. <laughs> Just throwing your cards yeah. everywhere, no worries. Just throw them everywhere. Um, so play one Void Vanishment, use that as cost for the first Void Feast. Sure. And then use the second Void Feast as cost for the... Uh, for the use the first Void Feast as cost for the second Void Feast. And you can summon five monsters. Which you did to me. I've done that quite a few times. It's very consistent with Lilith and Void Vanishment. Um, to see two Void Feasts, basically. Yeah. Um, I, I want to add in Trap Tricks as well to make it even more consistent. Um, but yeah, if you can summon five monsters, including two Spell Negates, one Monster Negate, and two DD Crows, most decks can't play through that. Sure. Um, one Metaverse, I'm probably going to up this to two if I can find the space. Uh, just sets Lair from your deck. Mm -hmm. So if you've got this set with your EEV and your opponent summons a big monster, you can flip Metaverse, play your Lair, um, flip EEV, tribute their monster, get rid of all their spells in hand. Yeah. Such a disgusting play. And one Skill Drain, um, because this just stops monster effects from happening. You can still activate the effects. All the Infernoids activate their effect um, to banish as co uh, to send as cost. So you send your opponent's monsters as cost to so be able to do nothing. Resolve, yeah, um, also, because all the Infernoids do banish as cost, 
um, and Lilith's, uh, sorry, doesn't banish, Sense of the Grave is cost, um, tributes is cost. Lilith also tributes is cost, Arima tributes is cost. They're off the field, so skill drain doesn't affect them. Yeah, sure. Um, but it kills your opponent. You play this, and like most decks can't play through it. Mm -hmm. um, on to the extra deck. Um, most of the extra deck I don't care about. In the past 20 rounds I've played with this, I've summoned maybe seven things from the extra deck. Yeah. Um, but it's good to have. So, Infernoid Tierra, this is the big boy of the Infernoid. You summon him off of Imagination. Um, he gets effects based on how many you send. You normally send six. Uh, so, he gets first effect is to mill three cards from both your deck and your opponent's deck. Yeah. The second one is you send three cards from your extra deck and your opponent's extra deck to the grave. Now, my targets for the uh, for those are I send three Entuses. And you get to select them, right? You get to, I get to select mine, your opponent gets to select those. Sure. Um, but they never have anything that they want to send to the grave. Of course not, not normally um, anyway. Whereas I do. I send these, every time one of these hits the grave, I pop a card on the field. Cool. So I send three of these, pop three monsters. Or nice. Three spells, three traps, doesn't matter. Um, I play Skyframe Lord Omega. Yep. Uh, Skylight Red Dragon Archfiend and Beals as my Synchro 8s. Um, Skylight just blows up the field. Omega rips card from your opponent's hand. Beals is a pain in the ass to deal with. Sounds good. Again, I don't really summon these, but they're nice to have. Yeah. Um, Lynx, one dual little Chimera, because without the field spell, all of my uh, monsters are, well, most of my monsters are fire. Um, one Wee Witch's Apprentice, because yep. when the field spells out, everything's dark. Mm -hmm. um, play Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn, and Griffin. And Griffin, okay, sure. Um, I, I don't summon these, they're just there. Good utility um, cards. Unicorn is the only one I have summoned in the past um, 20 games. Um, it was literally just to bounce a Colossus so I could attack the game. Yeah. Um, which took me like three turns to realize I could do. <laughs> uh, even though I was playing into a Colossus that wasn't moving. Um, and I summoned it with like three seconds to go and attack the game. Um, but yeah, I, I don't summon them. Again, Griffin, his effect doesn't hurt me. And it sometimes cool to add like Void Vanishment. Yeah. I could add Void Vanishment. I don't. But. Um, one Summon Sorceress. Again... I don't summon it, but everything in my deck really is a fiend, so it's, it would be really easy to summon. I just don't put out very many bodies at a time, and if I do, the bodies I have got on the field are probably worth more than the summon sorceress. Mm -hmm. um, and purely because in my side deck I have one card, I play Ultimate Falcon, um, just to ruin people's days really. Um, this ruined one person's day that was playing True Draco mm -hmm. as he popped my uh, Awaken the Dragon for some unknown reason, even though he knew it was either a card that was completely dead or Awaken the Dragon, but he popped it anyway. Did it anyway. To be fair, I mean, if people aren't, aren't prepared, they don't have the Boral Sword, they yeah. can actually like lose games really easy yeah. to that card. So. Um, and I've got my tokens because the Lair summons a token for every Dark once attributed to the turn player's field at the end phase. Sure. So if I tribute three things on your opponent's turn, they get three tokens. Sweet. Um, on to the side deck. Some of this stuff I didn't really go into. I've got my twins, but I didn't play them very much. You need them though, really. Yeah, you need them just in case. Um, I've got two deck devastation viruses. I sided these in for EVs whenever I was playing against monster decks. Mm-hmm. Because um, they hit quite a few of the dangers. I don't, I'm not quite sure how many of the dangers, but they hit some of the more annoying ones. Um, and then I've got the Cyframe Gear, uh, Cyframe Gear Gamma package, because I can tribute all my own stuff for effects, mm -hmm. and then I've got an empty field. Yeah, so I can then just resolve that. Yeah, um, I only really cited this in if I was going second. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't. I saw it once against True Draco, and he summoned Inspector Border. And I'm like, well, <laughs> well, that's that then. Yeah. Just, I've, otherwise, I saw it like once throughout the rest of the tournament. Um, one wake in the dragon, as I said before, just in case somebody's 
daft enough to hit it or if I don't want them to hit my back row, um, I'll flash this at them. So it might be that. They know that get, it's there somewhere. They'll get scared and hopefully not hit it if I don't want them to. Uh, two Book of Eclipses. Yep. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm siding these in for because I've got such a good Thunder Dragon matchup anyway that I don't need them for Thunder Dragons, but they're a good card. I really, really rate them. Um, and then three Wing Dragon of Brass Fear Modes for when I am going second. Yep. Um, this card, every time I side it in, my opponent will only make two monsters if I draw it. <laughs> if I Standard. do not draw it, they'll make three monsters. That's always the way. Uh, it's just the way it always is. But um, it's a really good blowout card if your opponent's making a big field. Uh, the only time I have seen it, I was playing against zombies and they put out a field of like three monsters and I just tributed everything. And then, yeah, it was, they were a bit sad about that. But Cool. Well, any changes you make before we go? Um, the only things I want to do is I really want to put Trap Tricks in. Because uh, yep. Trap Tricks would, I feel, up the consistency. And put an extra Metaverse in to make Trap Tricks live on that. Yep. Drop an EV and possibly put in um, something else because I'm not sure if I rate EV as highly as I did before going into the tournament. Mm -hmm. It's really good against certain decks, but it just dies. Well, people that dodge so him in as well. Yeah, it's just there's, there's, I mean, playing Thunder Dragons with I mean, Thunder Dragons, I win anyway. But um, yeah. I'm not sure if it's as good as I thought it was going into the tournament. Cool. Any shout-outs? Uh, shout-outs to the boy Mark for his space and letting us film here. Yeah, man, he's a good guy. Uh, shout-out to Rufio for doing the video. You're very welcome. Shout-out to you for taking part. Oh, of course. Anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and shout-out to the Tuggers. The Tuggers. Tugger last, boys. Last time I got in trouble for not shouting out the Tuggers. Didn't forget this time, but Jamie did. So we can he grow did. him. Cool. I think, I think Pips did as well. He did as well. Yeah, Shocking. No, nobody's shouting at the Tuggers, just myself. Disgusted. We got one of the Tuggers here dying in the corner. Poor guy. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, thank you very much again, James, for taking part in this video. Much appreciated. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this video. If by chance you haven't had enough of listening to me waffle at you through a video about a children's card game, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are on the screen, or if you're feeling really lazy, you can click the links in the description. While you're at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content too. It'll make me smile, I promise. And who could ask for more than that? Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.